I just finished the Oregon BDR, 750 miles from the Nevada border all the way up to the Washington border. A very diverse and difficult route through the desert, through the forest, around Mount Hood, and all the way up to the Columbia River. I went a little bit lighter this year on my setup versus what I had last year when I did the Washington BDR, and I know some of you have been curious, so I'm going to run down everything that's in my bags that I took with me on the trip. <laughs> I'm not going to get super in-depth as far as the luggage goes because I made a video about that on the Giant Loop channel, which you can check out here, but I will just tell you what I have. This is the Giant Loop Diablo tank bag. The only thing I had in here was camera gear, so we're not going to get into what's in that bag because I'm not going to bore you with that because most of you won't be filming. Giant Loop Possibles pouch. That's my first aid Possibles pouch attached to a Giant Loop Coyote bag. This is 40 liters and the Giant Loop Rogue bag, which is another 17 liters. I also had a Giant Loop Fender bag on the front of the bike that had my tire changing kit, my tool kit, my CO2 inflator, my toe strap, and a few other things in it. Unfortunately, I wasn't checking the tension every day because I'm an idiot, and I lost it on section two, so that won't be part of this, but I recommend taking a tool kit and a tire changing kit with you if you're going to do a BDR run. Fortunately, Tim, who was with me, had one, so we just kind of relied on his, and we didn't end up needing it, thankfully. Let's just start at the back and work our way forward. Let me show you what is in the Rogue Dry Bag. So here on the back of the bike, uh, I tried to keep the things I thought I was going to need access to most often or first and also the lightest stuff I could in the road because all the heavier stuff I want in the legs of the coyote closer to the ground as close to the ground as possible so this is just clothes and food mostly uh, let's pull it out and I'll show you what's in there don't have to take this off to get into it which is why I chose it for what I have in here so uh, my emergency rations of jerky aka lunch aka I didn't need to eat that thankfully um, I got a bunch of clothes, so apologies, you're going to see some underwear. Ca avert your eyes. Uh, this t-shirt, I think I took two t-shirts, a couple changes of underwear. I took a pair of shorts that are also swim trunks, so for hanging around camp, but also for hopping in the hot springs, which I did a couple times. This is a, a mid-layer jacket that actually I didn't think I was even going to use. I mostly brought it in case we got caught in uh, rain because I had only mesh gear because I thought it was going to be so hot, but I ended up wearing this in the evenings a bunch of times, so I was really glad to have this semi-waterproof. This is a Scorpion mid-layer jacket. I didn't go ultra, ultra light. I did bring some cigars, but only three, so I brought my small humidor just for chilling around camp at night. I brought my Seat Concepts fold-up hat, which got very folded up. Uh, these are a pair of shants or uh, zip-off pants, short pants. I brought these because they're versatile. They're the only pair of pants I had, but they also could turn into shorts if it was too hot, kind of lightweight. I actually slept in these almost every night. Another t-shirt. I probably only needed one extra, but that's what I went with. Oh, and then I had some, some dehydrated meals. I did end up eating one the first night, but was able to avoid eating any others the rest of the trip. Camp shoes slash slippers. Brought a pair of those. They fold up real nice in this bag. That's my thermosel. That thing is a lifesaver and definitely take one. This hooks up to an isobutane canister, so you've got some redundancy there, but it is a mosquito repeller, and man, were there a lot of mosquitoes on this trip. Uh, a little liquid refreshment for trailside, just in case, slash engine degreaser, slash whatever you may want to use it for, but I like to have a little just in case we're not near a store at night, and I want to have a little beverage. It's all about priorities, minimalist priorities on this trip. And then that's my toiletries bag, contact solution, deodorant, toothbrush, uh, wet wipes, toilet paper, things like that in this. And this is just a cheapo Molly bag I got on Amazon. People always ask, but just a cheapo bag from Amazon. And that's it for the, for the Rogue. So all the lightweight stuff that I needed to get in and out of quickly, and maybe it's a little overkill on the extra clothes, but I didn't end up having to do any trail laundry on this, so uh, I was happy with that. And all that stuff is compactable too, which is why I shoved it all in the same bag. So I'm not gonna take everything out of the first aid pouch. Uh, what's in here is a Survivewire first aid kit, which I will link for you, it's a small kit, my Trail Tech compressor, and my Rocky Mountain ATV jump starter kit. So I wanted to be able to jump start a dead battery and change a tire because those are the two most likely things that are going to fail out in the middle of nowhere. Let's look at the camping gear that's inside my Coyote bag. This bag was great, the whole trip, no issues with it, really happy with it. I didn't notice it was there. In fact, I was probably riding harder than I should have been. Big Agnes mica basin chair. Overkill? Maybe, but I don't like sitting on the ground. Didn't take my table this time. That's the big minimalist step that I took to be, have less gear this time. Big Agnes Boundary Deluxe sleeping pad. And I also have an extra pillow that I just keep in here because I like to sleep with two pillows and this one is literally 
that big. So that is the Sea to Summit Eros Premium Pillow. Most of my camping gear came from Moto Camp Nerd, by the way, so you can order all of it on his site. Uh, I had a little rip in the stuff sack here, but that was my fault. So otherwise, this is the Enlightened Equipment 20 degree quilt. Love this thing, packs down very small, very lightweight, kept me very warm. I've had it down to about 34 degrees overnight, which is two degrees above freezing. I need to replace the stuff sack, but the quilt itself has been fantastic, so I love this thing. Oh, just ripped it again. Coffee. My Giga Pump mattress inflator. Again, a luxury, but totally worth it in my opinion. Love that thing. This is a Giant Loop zigzag bag, and inside is all of my pronghorn straps and rock straps. I actually had it mounted originally here on the back of the bike, on the back of this rack, but I had to move it because uh, I had to rearrange the straps a little bit because I didn't like the way they were wearing while I was riding. So uh, I threw that in the bag, but it wasn't inside the bag initially. Nemo, Philo, luxury, best pillow for camping there is in the world. Chewy, what are you doing, bro? Silky Gone Boy. Mostly took it in case we needed to clear any trail, but in a pinch you could also make a fire with this, cut up firewood. Uh, didn't end up needing to, but it's the kind of thing I like to have and not use. Jet Boil Flash with Java Kit. Use this to boil water for mountain house meals, and more importantly, make coffee every morning. It has a French press setup built in. I like this setup a lot. Compact, the canister fits inside. Good piece of kit, and uh, all of my friends seem to be switching to these. Even Tim finally got one, because they just work that well. This bag, this is my bag that I keep everything I take on every trip in. My big possibles pouch, I like to call it. But it's got like sunscreen, a lamp for around camp, my foldable Sea to Summit X mug, headlamp, bug spray, paracord, my knife, spork, uh, toilet paper, Bigfoot bushcraft fire starters, charger for my headlamp, an extra uh, neck gaiter that I actually use is just like a towel for wiping things down. So some ibuprofen, some uh, sweet and low for my coffee, and some uh, allergy meds in here, but that's just sort of the catch-all for stuff that I don't want loose in the bottom of the bag. And this is just a Coglin's mesh pouch. I think I got a three pack for like 12 bucks. Uh, extra pronghorn strap. Not really sure where that's from, but there it is. And the best moto camping tent in the world. Targoel UL2, Big Agnes, bike packing tent. Look how small this is. It fits down in one leg of the coyote bag. This is half the size of my other backpacking tents, and yeah, it's expensive, but it is so worth it to save that space. It leaves me room for some of the other luxuries that I probably don't need to bring. If I didn't have this, I couldn't bring my chair. So it's worth it to me. Uh, it's a great tent, sets up quick and easy, very lightweight, and I've got a ton of use out of it the last couple years. This is my Giant Loop Cactus Canteen. So it actually folds up for storage when you're done with it. I had this strapped on the bottom of the bag. As you can see, it's very dusty. So I had a gallon of extra water with me to make coffee, to refill my hydration pack, whatever, the whole time. And then on the last day, I just emptied it and rolled it up and threw it in the bag. So it was not hanging from the bottom of the thing empty. And bear spray. Didn't need it, thankfully. Works on bears and, uh, and not bears. And then I had an extra toe strap, my giant loop toe strap. So I didn't lose this one with my kit because it was actually in the coyote bag. So giant loop toe strap, good piece of kit. So I understand that this is not a small amount of gear. Nowhere in this video am I saying, look at my minimalist setup. It is minimalist for me. This is half as much stuff as I took last year. And I will say this year I used almost everything I took and last year I did not, I could not say that. So I didn't use the just in case items like the toe strap or the saw, but I used basically everything else you see here. So I thought I had this set up pretty well refined and that's in, thanks in large part to the shakedown run I did ahead of time where I went out and tested all the gear in the bags and the bike. Everything was great, didn't really notice the luggage on the bike and on a route that is very difficult or at least more difficult than I was expecting start to finish. It's really nice that I have to think about all the extra weight of my bags and dropping my bike and how hard it might be to pick it up. So I'll put a full list of all this stuff in the description for you in case you got some ideas for your BDR trip or just a regular moto camping trip, whether you're trying to go ultra light or you're rocking a GS with 2000 liters of additional space. I love all this gear. I've used this gear. There's nothing here that I wouldn't recommend. And so um, I hope that helps you. If you're looking to do a BDR, just get out and do some moto camping of your own. Please consider subscribing for more motorcycle camping, ADV, dual sport, and other shenanigans. Because I want to be your internet riding buddy and I'm better than your regular riding buddies because I come with a mute button. Thank you for watching and please do not forget to be excellent to each other. Uh, thank you.